Once known as Saigon, this city was renamed after Ho Chi Minh, founder of the Communist North, when his forces reunified the country in 1975, beating the American back south. In this 48, we study the modern courting techniques of this traditional society. You like movies? Yes. I'm a movie producer. Oh, cool. <laughs> and find out firsthand what makes the Mekong Delta so fertile. And we test the nerves <coughs> of Vietnam's favorite idol. Vietnam has one of the fastest growing economies in Asia. And some of the busiest streets I've ever seen in my life. And the major force driving that is this ever growing city of six million people. <laughs> Job, it. it matches. How yes. did you know? Not so. You know, girls love flowers, so I know. <laughs> Drive like an old lady, okay? Okay, I am an old lady. I know. Loanne wanted to show me how this booming city has embraced many cultures, from the architecture of its French colonizers right. to the hard-nosed capitalism of the West. So slow, we should, we should ride faster. Last year, Ho Chi Minh City drove Vietnam's 8% economic growth, but most people live on 45 US dollars a month. The country is richer, but the gap between the poor and the, and the rich is even bigger. Gucci there. Yeah. Gabbana, you know, this is the new Ho Chi Minh City, isn't it? It is the new one. And the latest symbol of Ho Chi Minh City chic. <laughs> Originally used by the French fighting Vietnamese nationalists in the 1950s, now... In this country, if you own a Vespa, it means that you are fashionable, trendy, and sometimes you are rich. How much is your cost? This one is about uh, 2000 2000 that's, that's expensive. Well, uh, that's very expensive. Yeah, mine is much cheaper. But look, it's, it's uglier. Yeah, I want that one. Five years ago, scooters were beyond the reach for most Vietnamese. Now 98% of households own one. But this was just one of the many social transformations. The, bride, the, bride. the humble breakfast of noodle soup, pho, has turned into an aspirational dining experience. Ah, thank you. You've got street food, which is probably you know, half the price of this. But you've converted a lot of Vietnamese to coming into a restaurant like this. For 24, uh, with this kind of presentation, it's like bringing street dancer uh, to Bali. Once the living standard is, is going up, they require uh, not only uh, eating the food, but also enjoy the experience. So, you're going to take on McDonald's and KFC? Oh, wh why not? Like uh, like KFC, uh, after 10 years uh, in Vietnam, they have 44 stores. But for 24, we already have 56 stores after four years. You know, this is a communist nation, and some people are trying to work out what is the future. The, the, the young Vietnamese people, especially, they like to prove that they can do things. They like to be successful in the, in the global market. But the rise of the global market is now threatening traditional markets. Would you eat here? Um, once per year. <laughs> <laughs> I think this place is, is good for tourists to see uh, the real culture of Vietnam. But the Vietnamese people actually prefer uh, something now more modern. Thank you so much. OK, all the best. Two hands out, that's why she wants uh. to shake hands. <laughs> I'm noticing everybody's wearing masks. Yeah, they just want to protect themselves from the sun. Look at the poster. We have the image of Ho Chi Minh. It says that the ideology of Ho Chi Minh is the big spiritual treasure of our Communist Party and our nation. Is he still loved? as much as he was, say, 30 years ago? Well, you need to have a survey. <laughs> Show the people whether they... Yeah. <laughs>
Communist propaganda is everywhere in this capitalist-minded country, and we were meeting an artist who once sold such messages in the Vietnam War. Hello to my friend who comes from far away. Nock is now 72 and able to paint whatever he likes. And they're all bare feet. Because they were the poorest people in the society. I don't, I don't love to, to, to paint the people who wear shoes. <laughs> but during the war, he worked for the people. Oh. About Ho Chi Minh and the social workers of the society at that time. So what does he remember about Ho Chi Minh? I almost learned him by heart. <laughs> this is he visited my art school in Hanoi and he was smoking at that time and when he, he got into the school he stopped smoking and put the butt of the cigarette and put it in a flower pot and all of my friends just took that butt and keep it as a memory, <laughs> as a souvenir, you know, as a <laughs> But Nock's battle was more to liberate Vietnam than for an ideology. I'm not a communist. Wow, how interesting. <laughs> I love my country. So what does he believe in? I believe that Vietnam is going to be good. Um, the people are very nice. Đặc biệt là những người dân đất chứ không phải những người đi dạy. Especially the bare feet people, <laughs> not the people who wear shoes. I'm not wearing shoes. <laughs> With shoes, we headed to the Dogma Gallery, which puts these communal messages on anything that will sell. It's run by a British collector and investment banker. We look at propaganda and we think it's a set of messages, but actually in some places it was, it was a way of telling the news. And you know, this is the spirit of a country that whooped the arse off the Americans. What does it mean for you to meet Mr. Nock? These are the guys who this created all this. One of the most impressive things about this country is the spirit of the people. These are really very, very good representation. So the paintings in China, everybody's happy. Mm -hmm. Look, everybody's happy. Mm -hmm. Here, you look at the paintings here, people are under pressure and suffering. Despite their propaganda, Dominic thinks their most deeply held principle is pragmatism. When I came here, actually, there was no real doubt in my mind that Vietnam was a country with the mission to stop being poor, to uh, you know, rejoin the world that was uh, generally excluding them. <laughs> Now Vietnam's propaganda urges people not to drop litter and to protect themselves against HIV and AIDS. And if the posters don't convince them, well, maybe a monk will. So are you a religious girl? Mm, yes, but not really. I am 50% religious. <laughs> After 2,000 years in Vietnam, Buddhism is getting involved in some unlikely areas. <laughs> These celibate monks and nuns are learning to lead a HIV and AIDS awareness group. I assume that you have a good boyfriend and you are on a business trip to business. Either you can choose not having sex or being faithful or kind of... A is abstinence. If I want to keep my boyfriend, I have to choose A. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I'm in trouble. I know, man. More traditionally, all monks must be healthy enough to receive the Buddha's teachings. He's the master. Ah, uh, yeah, man, yeah, man. <laughs> These skills once protected isolated mountain temples. So what animals would you defend yourself against in Vietnam? The tigers. Oh, yeah. tigers? Yeah. You've always been peaceful. Don't you ever want to just uh, show them what you can do? You know, my, you know my, they uh, practice uh, this uh, Lamato Agma only for self-protection. Uh, if uh, the country was invaded by the enemy, Vietnamese Buddhists must protect the country. The doctrine of protecting society means there's plenty to do as the gap between rich and poor widens. As the government gradually lifts restrictions on religious worship, Buddhist temples have seen their membership soar. Why do you think Buddhism is more popular now than ever in Vietnam? The standard of 
life of everyone is getting better, and when you have money, you feel more comfortable with your life, and that's the time when you can think of the spirit side. Do you feel spiritually enhanced? When we were chanting in there, there was an ant crawling near me, and mosquito. But like normally, I would kill it, but because <laughs> I got the influence from this kind of thing, so I just feel like I'm more gentle. I think it's a bit an ant's life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>